me out. I know this is a, a huge day for Trey and his family and, and um, something that he's really worked hard for throughout his career. Uh, I want to say a little bit about him. Uh, first off, as just a, a student athlete and a representative of the University of Tennessee, um, I've had the privilege of coaching a lot of um, outstanding young men uh, throughout my career. And um, I would say that Trey is uh, as good a student, as good a representative, uh, good a teammate as any that I've ever been around. The circumstances that um, it's kind of been presented to him over the last um, 24 months uh, were very unusual. Um, and the fact that he's been able to overcome them and, and uh, become the type of player that he has become without the opportunity to being able to participate every day in practice. Uh, can't say enough about his work ethic, uh, his commitment to excellence, um, you know, on and off the field, but um, really is probably one of the better football players in this entire country. Uh, and he's done that uh, not being able to practice each week. Um, and if you know anything about the game of football, it's a developmental game, especially the position that he plays. Um, you know, you're sitting there relying on three or four other guys beside you, but the fact that he's been able to, to plug in there on Saturdays and, and be able to produce and play at the level that he's been able to play at speaks volumes of him uh, and his commitment to excellence. Uh, with that, I'm going to let Trey um, come up here and talk. First and foremost, I want to give all the, all the praise, honor, and glory to God for allowing me to be here in this situation. I want to thank you all for coming out today. I have a long list of thanks before I begin. I want to thank my family and friends for being by my side. I want to thank Coach Mickey Marley, Coach Samper, Coach Hardegree, Coach King, the Bradleys, and Artis Hicks for helping me in high school and seeing potential in my abilities. I want to thank Coach Pruitt, Coach Fulmer, Coach Friend, Coach Fitzgerald, Coach Mike Farrell, Coach Cameron Clemens, and the entire coaching staff for their wisdom and guidance and support. I wanted to give a special thanks to Dr. Klink, Geronimo Boche, Jason McVeigh, Alex Medina, and the entire medical staff at the University of Tennessee. I want to thank all of my teammates from past and present who I've grinded with, struggled with while playing football. I want to thank all of All Nation for their continual love and support for not only myself, but my entire team throughout the years. You see, my story begins in West Tennessee in a city named Jackson. Ever since I was a child, I dreamt of playing SEC football. I used to pray and ask God that he would make me 6'5 so I could be big enough to play the game I love. Fast forward to my sophomore year in football, and there I was 6'5 and big enough to play the game at a high level. Shortly after I began receiving offers to play Division I football, I received numerous scholarships to major SEC universities. Life was great. Everything was great. However, the stark reality of life struck at an early age. My mother, Dorsetta Smith, fell sick and died. Soon after, which completely crushed my world. Excuse me. From that point since, I've been on a mission to fulfill my promise to her. I had to decide what institution was for me. Ultimately, I had to choose home. I fell in love with this university. From watching Juwan score the game winner at UGA to breaking a streak in Neyland against Florida. When it was time to sign my papers and make a decision, I knew my home was in the state of Tennessee at the University of Tennessee. Tennessee is where I was raised, where I belong. I arrived on campus a wide-eyed freshman, nervous, anxious about the task I faced. I played well my first year. However, adversity struck. I was diagnosed with blood clots in 2017, near the end of the season. I fought back again, had another setback in 2018. I persevered and came back this season and fought for everything I could. Now as we sit here today, I'm faced with a life-changing decision. You see, my mom was sick. I promised her that I would receive my degree and diploma and I would play in the NFL one day. I want to be 100% sure of my decision. With that being said, I will honor my mother, Dorsetta Smith. I made up my mind and don't expect to ever look back. I'm going to say at the University of Tennessee,
decision was it and ultimately how difficult a decision and ultimately why stay another year when you could have gone ahead and start and made made a living doing this yeah you know i think i left some money on the field so to say i think there are major things i can increase and do better at be a lot more consistent with my game you know i want to attack those areas and do better Trey, I know you're, you're really close-knit family. How much did you rely on your dad and your sister when you kind of weighed the pros and cons, whether to stay or come back? Yeah, very, very heavy. We're a spiritual family. You know, we took a lot of time to pray, think about it, you know, did our proper research, made sure it was the right decision, and we came together. We made a decision. Trey, do you feel like from a medical standpoint it will help you to show NFL teams one more season of you, you know, dealing with your condition and being able to, to maintain? Yeah, absolutely. I think it will. Trey, when did you sort of realize that this was the right move for you? Um, just thinking about it. You know, we uh, sent my film off and got it evaluated by the College Advisory Board. They recommended I came back, you know, and just after thoughtful prayer and consideration, we decided it was the best option. Brent, and then Jesse. Trey, did you have a number in your head that you needed to hear, or was there something you needed to hear from that advisory board that would push you to go ahead and leave or to push you to come back? Did you have that? in your mind and, and how long have you kind of had that, that, that thought in your mind in terms of what you had to have from them in terms of news? Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a number. You know, you just want your stock to be as high as it can be. You know, I just feel like as a player, I have a lot better, I have a lot more things I need to fix uh, in order to get at a higher level and play the game, you know, play the game the way I know I can play it. Trey, Trey, Jeremy in the back. Jeremy talked about it, you know, the offensive line being a developmental position. Everyone knows that you weren't able to practice much this past season. Is there kind of a plan in place for next year now that you are returning to, to get back on the practice field more? Is that something that you talked with, with the doctors, with Coach Pruitt and, and kind of the like at Tennessee? Yeah, you know, we have a great plan uh, here at University of Tennessee. We have a great medical staff, um, you know, talking with Coach Klink. Um, I mean, Dr. Clay, excuse me. But, you know, we, we have a great plan. You know, anything he feels comfortable with, we're going to stick to it. You know, this plan's worked this far, so. Trey and then Blake. Trey Wallace right there. Trey, have you got the time to, to speak with teammates before this announcement? And, and if so, what was their reaction? Yeah, I never, I didn't really tell anybody the truth about like that. <laughs> I just sort of left them in the gray a little bit. Trey, you mentioned wanting to get better in some areas next season. Can you kind of elaborate maybe some of those areas where you think you can improve your game as a senior? Yeah, man, there's uh, – where do I start? Um, balance, body control, overextension, uh, being too aggressive at times, uh, which I think is just a timing thing. Uh, just got to play the game under control. You know, sometimes I get really overaggressive. I just want to kill everybody when I'm out there. But, you know, it's playing with uh, control violence. That makes sense. You talked about wanting to graduate. How close are you in terms of being on track for your degree? I should be able to graduate in May. Austin. Trey, did you have a chance to kind of, you know, talk to Peyton or anybody else that's kind of went through a similar decision and kind of pick their ear about, you know, what was, you know, or was it just a different situation for you? I just think it's sort of a different situation. Um, you know, it's just sort of, it's my decision at the end of the day, you know, it's going to be my life. So. I just sort of felt like, you know, I could rely on the information I was getting. I was confident in it, and I'm confident in my abilities. You know, that I had a good plan, you know, a proper, a proper plan to, like, come back better. That makes sense. A couple more, Brent. Trey, when did you make the final decision? I know you said after the bowl game, you know, you want to take some time to celebrate. Did you have a pretty good idea then what you were going to do, or was this something once you got back from Jacksonville – got with your family that you really honed in? Were you really still wide open through the whole bowl game and the whole bowl process? Yeah, I was just thinking about it the whole time, honestly, just, you know, making decisions. Obviously, when we get with people who know what they're talking about, um, you know, together, we made a better, you know, decision, conclusion, essentially. Jordan in the back and then Gene, we are last one. Trey, with the success that this team has had down the stretch, did that impact kind of your decision to stay here and kind of follow through with what you started in, in turning this program around? I wouldn't say it impacted me, but I mean, I definitely want to be a part of it. I mean, we're building something special here at Tennessee. I believe in this coaching staff. I believe in the players that we have coming. You know, we're building something special. We have unfinished business this next season. Gene, yep, you're good. All right, thanks, Trey. We'll have Thank you all. Dr. Clint will be up here next.
we will email out this statement from Dr. Klink as well. <clears throat> well, thanks for the opportunity to talk as well. Uh, unfortunately, I don't do this very often, so I made some notes here. Um, Trey wanted me to kind of walk through his uh, medical uh, progress so far uh, from, from start to where we are now. Um, as all of you know, Trey was diagnosed with pulmonary emboli or blood clots in his lungs in February of 2018. Um, we initiated him on a course of anticoagulation. He was cleared for full participation in football in, in August. Um, in October of that year, Trey presented during practice with some signs and symptoms that were somewhat worrisome for a recurrent blood clot episode. Uh, we did perform some tests at the hospital that evening. Those tests were also somewhat worrisome, and Trey was immediately restarted on his anticoagulation and removed from participation. After that, we were able to meet with several specialists throughout the country and had them review Trey's case. We also asked them to review all those studies. And at this point, we feel very confident that uh, that episode in October uh, and the studies that we obtained were, were really suboptimal and more consistent with some lung changes from his prior blood clots, and we do not feel that those are recurrent blood clot episodes. Um, in subsequent with that, in collaboration with these specialists, we then developed a treatment plan that we felt would minimize Trey's risk for recurrent blood clots, but still allow him to play football and participate. Uh, we implemented that plan this past season. Trey did an outstanding job of sticking to the plan and working with us, and as you all know, he, he was able to excel. Um, now that we have a season's worth of experience uh, using this plan, we're going to make some fine-tune adjustments to this plan, and we plan to continue it into this spring and then into the 2020 season. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, as I said previously, Coach Pruitt will be available off the side to answer a couple questions, and Trey will be available to answer a few more questions off this side at the breakout.